the Royal Irish Regiment's homecoming parade, a day of celebration, but it also opened up old divisions. I think that it was unfortunate uh, that uh, this parade couldn't have been allowed to go without the political baggage attached to it by, by Republicans. Many people throughout this city has lost, uh, many families have lost loved ones by the hands of the same regiments that walked through our streets. Just like the bad old days, Republicans on one side, Loyalists on the other. This was a very nasty, very nasty, though timely reminder that the divisions that exist in our society are still not healed. This was a test for Northern Ireland of how far our divided society has come. It was also a reminder of how far we have yet to travel. We keep throwing the past at each other, but it's never actually dealt with, and political choices have to be made about how we move forward. Remembrance Sunday is a day of commemoration for those soldiers who died fighting for their country. This is a very different gathering to last week's parade. No riot police, no protests and no threat of violence. Will there ever come a day when people in Northern Ireland can lay their sectarian past to rest? Yesterday's events were in stark contrast to those of last week. The security operation was the biggest this city has seen in years. And it was a tinderbox situation. Around 30,000 supporters poured into the city centre to welcome the trips home from Iraq and Afghanistan. It had been nearly 50 years since the British Army marched through the streets of Belfast following the Korean War. 37 years in this man's army, and I've never seen the likes of that in my life in any city in the world that have served it. I'm really very proud that our city of Belfast has actually recognised what the services are doing in Afghanistan, Iraq and other more places in the world that we're involved in. Unbelievable. Um, I think if you ask any of the boys as well, they'll say the same. Um, I don't think they were quite expecting um, what we've seen today, but that's certainly just unbelievable. I can't believe it. And, and, I'm very grateful for everybody that's actually come down to show the support. Um, sometimes you know, you'll go away, you'll come back, you'll be a hero for a couple of days and that'll be the end we forgot about, but this time, you know, it's, it's, it's actually meant a lot. I don't think anybody could have forecast that the degree of support and the depth of support from, from so many people, whether they're old, young, disabled, and that means so much to the soldiers who have been on a tough tour of duty over the last seven months in Afghanistan, ordered to go there, um, and not quite sure on what, what sort of support they're doing that in terms of people back home. The soldiers have just returned from fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. Many of them, like 20-year-old Christopher McStay, lost friends in action. Unfortunately, the two people that was killed the first time we were out there, uh, part of the Royal Irish, knew them very well. But it's a sad time, but you just have to get the head down and get on with it. Coming Help home makes it all better. Yeah, that's the only thing you look forward to. And when you do get home, it's actually outstanding, especially today. People have come out of their own time to support us, which is excellent. But not everyone was happy to see the soldiers on these streets. Dissident Republican group Eric E held a protest on the Falls Road. Obviously, the British Army marching through Irish streets is very much an affront to Irish Republicans. We do have an ongoing occupation in Ireland. There are over 5,000 British troops stationed here, more than there are in Iraq at the minute. And Sinn Féin organised a counter demonstration just yards from the parade. The facts for people in this community remain the same, and that is that we have lost too many people at the hands of the British Army. So we feel that we have an, a right and an obligation to protest at this homecoming parade. But many nationalists take a different view. I think the attitude of the nationalist community was one of um, this is a very unnecessary act, uh, but, you know, we're just going to ignore it and let them get on with it. Uh, it really doesn't involve us. Uh, and that was the attitude. It wasn't one of hostility. It may have been a peaceful protest, but loyalists were also out in force. 
the tipping point uh, from uh, uh, anger into active violence uh, was not far away. Uh, but thanks to good policing uh, and very, very uh, strong policing at that, uh, that tipping point uh, was avoided. But this was a very dangerous situation. The families of the loved ones who attended that parade have to be commended for their actions because they were very dignified and they were very peaceful, even though they had fireworks thrown at them, nuts and bolts fired at them from scaffoldings and other places. The elements in the Republican community who decided to come out onto the streets uh, really did shoot themselves in the foot over this issue and caused, uh, caused a lot of anger, uh, uh, even among their own uh, community base. The political storm surrounding the Royal Irish Regiment's homecoming celebrations began in the City Hall chambers last September. Belfast City Council narrowly backed the hosting of a civic reception, with 26 members in favour and 20 voting against. However, in addition to the civic reception, the Ministry of Defence organised a march through the streets by British soldiers. This was given the green light by the Parades Commission. Whenever this issue was first raised in Belfast City Council, the motion which went to Belfast City Council was to support a civic reception. There was a previous civic reception held for the REC, for the George Cross awardees. No protest was held against that event because it in itself was held in a way which took on board other people's sensitivities. News of Sinn Féin's counter-demonstration was condemned by unionist and nationalist politicians who felt it would heighten tensions. A protest could have taken place a day after or a day before or whatever, if that's what was required. Uh, a counter-demonstration was, I think, a deliberate device to heighten uh, community and political tensions and as I say it was a distraction from Sinn Féin's present difficulties in relation to the Assembly and the Executive. I can understand uh, people's views. What I couldn't understand and still can't to this day is why they felt they had to intrude upon this ceremony on a Sunday which was designed simply to mark appreciation of servicemen and women's contribution whatever about the rights and wrongs of a particular war and observers feared the consequences of violence could be disastrous. The week before the parade, there was then a certain panic broke out because people realised that across Belfast posters were being put up inviting large numbers of people to come in together. And I think towards the middle of the week, it became clear that unless this was managed and unless this was actually taken into some kind of control, the danger was that it would go out of control with really serious ramifications for politics. But those fears of violence were averted at the 11th hour, with concessions coming from the army, then Sinn Féin. We worked very hard to try and get uh, the army to uh, review its position, and I think that worked to some extent with the, uh, the abandonment of the f uh, flyover and uh, uh, the removal of arms and so forth. Um, and of course uh, Sinn Féin then had to respond in kind to what the army uh, had done. In turn Sinn Féin changed their plans, abandoning their original route and protest venue to one further away from the parade. We decided uh, and, and argued out that we needed some sort of radical change uh, to try and de-escalate the, the type of tension which uh, frankly some other politicians and others were trying to increase and, and loyalism has said uh, that it is uh, mobilising and we, we want to avoid all of that. The fact that Sinn Féin backed down though had more to do I think with the fact that they were getting so much grief from many people across all sectors of the community rather than any desire on their part perhaps to do the right thing. If they were doing the right thing they would have allowed the parade to go without any interference or provocation whatsoever. But the political fighting over the parade didn't dampen the spirits of the soldiers returning home.